Morning everybody. Today I'm working on the plow. Just doing a little bit of uh well just getting it ready basically to start plowing. Um I'll just won't be there's not a lot to do to it. Um even though there probably is a lot I could do to it or we could do to it. Um, a lot of worn out parts on it that could be replaced, but for what we do it it doesn't matter. So I'll quickly run you through what I'm gonna do to it. Um, Dad wants to do a little bit of work to it as well, but he's not here today, so I'm just gonna get it, do a few of the maintenance things, get it ready, and um, then he's gonna modify where that new ram is that I put on the other week, <clears throat> because he wants to change the position of that. And um, yeah, it's basically it really. Um, we're not going to get too excited with everything, even though it does need a bit of work. So I was actually going to pull one of the disc hubs apart and replace some bearings because very long time viewers from about two years ago might remember I did replace two disc, um, I did overhaul two disc hubs and replaced the bearings in about two years ago. And I didn't realize at the time and it wasn't until I watched the video back, but I actually replaced the wrong disc Oh, the wrong bearings in the wrong hub and no one has picked up on it in the video i say that i want to replace this fourth one's bearings and then i end up doing the third one without realizing and no one picked up on it so <laughs> there you go i've just been looking at this morning so this is the one i replaced and then this is the one that i was going to replace which isn't as bad as i thought oh this one was actually worse it had some bail strings stuck in the hub so now I'm hesitant to actually do it because we don't have the correct hub seals and they're not, you can't buy them. Obviously this is International Harvester and they don't exist anymore and Case sure as hell isn't going to pick up the slack for the parts for them. So you can't buy those hub seals and there's not even one that's just readily available. Um, the ones we do have, they're slightly too small and they spin in the hub and it's almost probably going to be worse changing them and putting those hub, se those hub seals in then what are these just leaving the old ones on there? Um, a bloke did comment on the video where I was doing these disc hubs. I bet there's a place in Melbourne that custom makes hub seals and he got a heap of them made there and he reckons they're the place to go to. But I'm not doing that at the moment. If I was going to do all of them, I'd probably go get a heap of hub seals made up, but it's just not worth it for doing one or two. Um, yeah, so a little bit of pain in the ass that you can't get the parts, but it is international, so it's to be expected. So I don't think I will do those, do those bearings. I think we'll use it, see how they go. And if they aren't spinning right, I'll do them after. But it's not critical because we're not doing a lot of acreage. And then you'll remember I put this new ram on. So dad wants to change how it sits. So I think he wants to take this off of this end here, weld a bracket on the top, like this one. And then that'll sit up there. Cause you can see it's sort of, it's on a funny angle and it doesn't, it wouldn't quite work properly. And dad was saying he used to have the whole ram sitting on top of this plate and he put a longer pin through so it was level. Um, but yeah, he wants to uh, yeah, weld another bit of bracketry there. So we'll have to scavenge some steel and then weld that on, which isn't too hard of a task. And um, yeah, then we just got to grease it. <clears throat> and I've got to I'm pump all these tyres up and whatever with a bit of air, graze that. I've got to secure some hydraulic hoses with some new zip tyres and put it back in their clamp. Some of them come off and um, just make sure that nothing's going to fall apart. The majority of these pins that run on all the arms, they're all, they're all pretty worn out and they should really be replaced, but the actual holes that they go also worn out so replacing them won't solve any the problem but as i said it'll uh be fine for what we're doing so yeah i'll start doing a little bit of work i've got a couple of other jobs i'm going to do today uh whether or not i film any of it we'll see so we'll get into it
Right, so secure these hydraulic hoses a little bit better. They're not fantastic. <clears throat> but as you see here, you've got this pin. You can see how worn out that is. This is an original one, and that holds the drawbar to this bar here. You can change the angle of it. Um, yeah, so I've decided that that is too much slot. So I've got this other one here, which is actually the pin that was holding that ram up there. So we're reducing and reusing and recycling. Bob the Builder would be proud. And uh, perfect fit. So that can go in there, and that should take some of the slop out of the drawbar. Because uh, when you take off, there is a split second there where the entire drawbar moves before the plow moves. So we can probably turf this. Better hang on to it though, because that'll probably find some ridiculous use for it. So. All right, all the tires are inflated. Wasn't game enough to put a lot in this one. As you can see, it's very, very, very cracked. And uh, perished. And you need to be careful when you're pumping up tires that are that old and that cracked, because they can blow out on you. And you don't want that to happen. So, that's sort of the plow taken care of for now. <clears throat> I'll grease it tomorrow, because Dad's got the grease gun with him. Um, yeah, and then I'll give him a hand and we'll mount, remount that um, ram up. And then it should be pretty right to go. We'll see how those discs hold up and uh, anything else. Um, it's old and I don't expect things to not break. So <laughs> we'll see how we go anyway. Morning everybody, or well, afternoon actually. So yeah, ended up finishing up yesterday. Did those couple of odd jobs and I just took off home. So we're back again, me and Dad went out to a clearance sale this morning and had a look at a bit of crap that we didn't need. And uh, we've come back, fed some cattle. Now we are mucking around with this hydraulic ram on the plough. So we decided that we couldn't weld anything on it like so, because when this pivots it would twist and it wouldn't work. So we're gonna do what Dad had already had, sit it up like so, so it's level, and then put a big pin through there and then that should work fine and I'm gonna grease it as well. So Dad's just in the workshop here making the pin and he's just drilling out a hole to um, put the other pin through it so it doesn't fall out. So while he's doing that, I'll grease it and then, um, yeah, we'll start the tractor up. I'll check the tractor out and then we'll start it all up and um, maybe go do some plowing. Rightio, so we've been dicking out the hydraulic couplings on the tractor for the last 20 minutes or so. So I was just hosing out oil out of this bottom one. We thought, well I thought, the end piece of the hose um, there's the hose I had. So the end piece of this might have been rusted. So inside the coupling on the tractor there's an o-ring that seals on this surface there and if that's all rusted oil will escape. So we ended up pulling out the o-ring out of the bottom one and chucked a new one in there, just tested it then and it stopped leaking. And these aren't like, these ones aren't like the John Deere, how they had that little backing seal. These are literally just an o-ring. So we've just decided 
bugger or swap them all out now. The other one, it had been flattened on the ceiling part, like obviously quite old and probably hardened and had worn out and that's why it was leaking past. We hadn't used these remotes on this side. We'd only been using the right side for the scarifying. So that's why we didn't realize it was leaking so badly. So just gonna change out the other three O-rings on this and then the tractor will actually be all sealed up there and that should be pretty good. So I'll quickly do that and then, um, yeah, we'll try and get the play out there, maybe see how we go. But yeah, if your hydraulic couplings are leaking like that, check your O-rings and check that the ends of your hydraulic hoses, uh, the couplings aren't rusted, because if they're rusted and there's a little pitting, that's where the oil will um, leak past. So there's just a little tip for you. Rightio, I changed all the uh, O-rings and the couplings. They're right to rock and roll. They don't appear to be leaking, I don't think. I'll show you this pin setup on this hydraulic ram. We haven't tested it out yet. Dad will when he goes round. So that's how it should look. Well, that's how Dad designed it anyway. So the, a, a longer pin sits on top of that bar there and then that keeps the ram level. So that's ready to rock and roll too. And we've brought the plow out to this paddock that we're gonna start plowing. And uh, Dad's gonna do the first lap. I've never worked this paddock before. And he's gonna cut it out. There's a couple of rock barriers and a few uh, little areas that he wants to get into first. And then he's gonna do that, see how we go see how dry it is and he's going to do the paddock the first cut in reverse so he'll go the opposite way to what you would usually do with the plow so usually you'd go the way that it's pointing out he's going to turn around and go the other way and the reason being is that the discs because of the angle they work kicked the dirt constantly out to the outside of your paddock or the area you're working always to the outside so if you did that going along the fence you'll pile it up along your fence and if you continuously ploughed every year or so i guess you would get deeper and get a higher mound so if you hit it in reverse every time you always keep it lower than your fence so he's going to go out do a couple laps or lap or two whatever and um then we'll see how what, what the conditions are like Dad's just come back from his first, or from the pass he done on the outside lap. So I'm just going to get him to just say what he reckons. Yeah, good day viewers. We're doing this bit of ploughing. Uh, I've just done a back cut to bring it in from the fence so you don't keep chucking the soil out and creating a, a dam effect. So uh, Cam's going to do a round. This property, well this dirt, soil, it's a bit like the three bears. It's either too hard, too wet, or just right. Well this is baby bear just at the minute, it's just right. Beautiful moisture in the ground will turn over buddy. Fantastic. So, uh, it's the optimum time to plough here. 
Anyway, camel buddy, get into it, do a round and you knock off and then he's going out for tea. Fair dinkum. There you go, the dirt is just right for plowing apparently. Baby bear style. So I'll do a couple of laps and see how we go. So we're just gonna finish up. I've done one pass. So it's getting late in the afternoon and I'm gonna shoot off. Um, so yeah, it's plowing pretty good. As Dad said, it's just right. It's the perfect conditions to be plowing. As you just said to me before, the dirt's pretty crumbly and it should come up pretty good. So yeah, plow seems to be going all right. Nothing broke, so that's always a bonus. Um, Dad's gonna fuel it up in the morning with what fuel we've got in the tank and then I'll start and then I think he's gonna go get some more. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So this one was just a taster for you of what's to come with plowing. So uh, stick around for that because the old inter is out. So we'll wrap up the video. Thanks all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will catch us in the next one. See you right.